recording. Start streaming. Welcome to the Jim Fannin Show. Today we got Jen- Jennifer Lynn in the studio. She's going to talk and play. Oh no, we got the wrong cut up. Oh no, and it's horrible. See what happens when you're your own producer. Here's the website, jenniferlynn.net. play out a little bit so it's not a hard cut there we go so far so good i don't know hi hi thanks for coming in thanks for having me yeah it's my pleasure i um <laughs> i've been trying to get away from politics and all the negativity yesterday i had a great conversation with rob barry the blue turtle he's got such an interesting story and he doesn't think he's like well what do you Nobody wants to talk, you know, nobody wants to hear about my life. I'm like, dude, you're an inspiration. And I don't know the story. So I appreciate it because it gives me a break. I can do the monologue and the politics and the crap, yeah, for lack of a better <laughs> term, anytime. So uh, thanks for your time. I Absolutely. appreciate you being open to doing this. Um, not many strangers. No, you're not a stranger off the street. I've known you from... Central. From Central, yeah, yeah, when I used to sing there and you worked the switchboard, the cameras, mm-hmm. right? Camera. Yeah. Well, I was doing camera up and then I went over to, I'm like, what's that guy doing? Mark was <laughs> doing, uh, Brenda's husband, Mark, yep. was doing video switch. And mm-hmm. I'm like, I want to, what's that? Oh, that's the video director. I'm like, Let's do I that. I like that. <laughs> Look at all those flashing lights and dials and sliding. Like, the first time I came to Central, I looked mm-hmm. at that soundboard. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I don't know how to run a soundboard. Not I just have I. a mind like a <laughs> air traffic controller. So you give me 40 things to do that kind mm-hmm. of tunnels into one objective. Yep. Bring it. <laughs> so, and then I shadowed Derek. Yes. Love Derek. Yes, what a, he's amazing. What a mind. Yes. And a great leader. Yes. I would imagine Very he's talented. a great mentor as well. He's been that for me. Mm-hmm. Um, um, Bill's wife, sorry, I'm, see what happens when... The, when <laughs> Pastor Bill's wife? Yeah. Carlene. Carlene, yeah. yeah. So I, I went through Carlene for the um, for the hookup, mm-hmm. and she put me beside Derek, mm-hmm. but she didn't do it through the normal, you know, she probably just let Derek know that Jim's coming in, and he's, you know, maybe a potential new guy for you. Mm-hmm. So I shadowed him uh, behind the board, the soundboard, outside the booth, and he says, you know, after the first service, he's like, well, this, you know, you can go in the booth and stick around if you want, or you can go. I mean, mm-hmm. like, whatever. But, like, we start our volunteers over there, by the way. Yeah. And he points at camera <laughs> one, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so I'm not going to come and learn the board? Yeah. No. <laughs> Baby steps. <laughs> yeah. So I was, on the, I was on camera for about a year and loved it. That's awesome. We got really good at it. Yeah. I mean, it's just focus and Zoom. It's mm-hmm. not a big deal, but it, it's also being obedient and knowing how to get the, the, right the shot. shot when they yeah. tell you quickly, right? Yes. So, but now I'm that guy and I've just found such a huge um, opportunity to mentor because some, sometimes I've got teenagers. Mm-hmm. I had a 13-year-old kid last year from Eden. The first time he came off camera one, his face, the smile just was just it. like this big. He loved it. That's and awesome. he says, that was so cool. I'm like, dude, all right. Like, I got a guy. Yeah. It's like lots getting of, my hooks in you. Right? Lots of great opportunities there. They have so many great um, people there and opportunities and um, good-hearted people. So. Mm-hmm. 
So uh, I spent some time doing that. But yeah, I just found it great, a great opportunity to get in the ear of some of these young people. And well, who knows, maybe in some, some of the old guys that are on the on the cameras, too, because you don't. Well, I'm pretty in tune to the fact that maybe these kids don't hear I love you or I'm proud of you or nice job or a way to even like a way to go. Yeah, just some encouragement. Yeah. Absolutely. So, I mean, yep. I'm also very critical and we're doing a job and mm -hmm. it's important that we do it well. So I have no problem correcting and suggesting yes. and offering advice and stuff like that as far as the technical aspect goes. But uh, I make sure that when we're done, I go, thank you. And I do it before the because I lose half my crew when when the speaker comes up, right? Yeah. Because we've got five cameras for the rock and roll show, and yes. then I've only got basically two for the rest of the show. Yeah. So before the three and four leave, I'm yeah. like, I love you guys. Way to go. Awesome I'm proud job. of you. Yeah. you know? That's awesome. Anyways, enough about me. <laughs> Talk to us about who you are. How did you get to this place? Now you're over at Mountain Park. Yes. So you're playing there on a regular basis? Yes. Or? Yeah, I'm a regular but there. Tell us, before we get into that, just tell us a little bit about, like, who you are and okay. where you came uh, well, from I'm, and what you like I've to do. Born and raised in St. Catharines here. I've lived in the Niagara region for most of my life, um, with the exception of maybe about 10 years in the Kitchener Stratford area um, when I was married. And um, moved back down here to be closer to family. And I have a great support system down here, not just family, but friends and then church community as well. Um, really important to me. So that's what brought me back home. All right. Yeah. I'm going to show your website here now. Tell me about what jenniferlynn.net is about. I know you have a blog here. I'm on yes. your About Me page here yes. so people can look and just see a little bit about you. But what's the vision for this type of uh, activity? I mean, you're yeah. a great writer. Thank you. When I look at what you write, I'm like, oh, my. Thank you so like, much. There's so many words. <laughs> like, that takes a long time. And it does. If you're not. Yeah. If writing doesn't come naturally, it's a lot of work. Like for me to write that many words, I got to go and tune. Like I'm really hypercritical too. So yeah. uh, I just find that, man, writing something that long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like tough. it depends on what I'm writing. Um, certain blogs have come out just like quick and I'm done in two hours. It happens sometimes and those are really great moments. Um, and then other blogs, they'll take me a couple days or even a week because I'll write something and I'll go back and I'll edit it. Um, it's I try not to publish something that I write on the same day um, okay. so I can sleep on it and then go back with fresh eyes and retweak it and things like that. Um, just to make sure it's saying what I want it to say. Um, but it just started as um, really just an outlet for me, another creative outlet other than music to be able to write. Um, and uh, friends of mine, Emily and uh, James, they go to Central. Um, they encouraged me to start it. And uh, so they were very instrumental in that. And I'm very thankful for their friendship and their guidance and encouragement because um, I wouldn't have it if it wasn't for them. And so... Um, they kind of talked me into it and just to go for it. And I'm the kind of person where like, I don't want to start something unless it's the way that I want it done. I got that already you already know me. that. <laughs> um, Which is fine, just, but you got, yeah. you really have to balance that with the idea. Like I've used that cr as a crutch, like, Oh, I'm just going to wait till it's perfect. It's never perfect. Yeah. And it's better to throw it out there and have it ha be half it is what than, it is. and not yeah. really get it off at all you know so yeah exactly so that's so that's what um they are kind of instilled into me and so they kind of give me that nudge um and then i started it and uh wasn't sure really what to expect it was just kind of not just for me as another creative outlet but it was also therapy like free therapy for me as well just like music is it was just another way to do that and then hopefully just like my music um hopefully it's an encouragement to others um and so that was the whole point of doing the blog as well and as it's gone on and then more people read it um i just had a lady comment on one of my blogs just from maybe a couple months ago um where like you can comment on the end of my blogs like if you want to oh cool um is and it, it was just site? pardon wordpress lets yes, you do that it is, yeah. yeah and uh it was just a random person i didn't know who this person was she had stumbled upon my blog when she was looking up a certain quote or something and she stumbled upon it and she said it made her cry and it was an encouragement to her and it was what she needed to hear and stuff like that and i've had a few people um private message me and stuff and it's always an encouragement when people do that because then it makes me feel like 
you know what you're doing is not in vain it's for a purpose and it kind of helps me to just kind of keep going no matter what how do you get past the who do i think i am type of because i mean i think uh, as an I guess I'm an artist at some level. Somebody mm-hmm. said that to me years ago. Well, you're an artist too. Mm-hmm. Look what you're doing. I'm like, I don't really consider myself one. But how do you get over the, who do you think you are? Oh, you know, yeah. Because, I think that all the time. Yeah. For sure. Like, I'm I'm nobody, like, I'm not famous. I'm not, like, nobody really knows who I am outside of my social circle, really. Um, so, yeah, there's definitely thoughts about that. I doubt myself all the time. Anyone who knows me really well knows um, that I, I can be very insecure and doubt myself and, oh, I'm not ready yet. And I'm, you know, a big rehearsal person. I like to know what's going on and, you know, and, and just have everything in place before I do something, you know, before I feel like I'm ready. And a lot of what I've learned in the last couple years is just that's all garbage you just have to go for it and kind of you know that famous quote just kind of take a leap and build your wings on the way down (laughs) or yeah just believe the net is there like and it's like i told you coming in today you can't you can't screw this up yeah like it's it's live ready to a certain extent and even what you might consider a nightmare mm-hmm. is good radio. Yeah, <laughs> <So> <laughs> at least it'll be entertaining. <laughs> you can't screw it up at all. So. And that's, you know, I, I'm pretty good at acknowledging people. I think you know that about me already in our limited interactions. And you, you're really easy to get to know as far as you're an open book. Like I, I see discipline and focus and commitment and... I think you see and admire in others what you lack in yourself. And that's what I said to you in the chat yesterday. Oh, discipline. (laughs) Foreign to me. Like, I I shouldn't say that I'm hard on myself, but I have discipline for this. Yeah, because you're passionate about it. Yeah, but I don't practice. Like, I loathe rehearsal. Yeah. I've never, like, since we started this... um, season of the Jim Fannin show that's mm-hmm. you know not on terrestrial radio like on terrestrial radio I had notes yeah but I never rehearsed anything and mm-hmm. I like I feel like when I rehearse I start stumbling and, oh, okay. it, and it just seems not authentic so like you don't see any show notes I've got nothing really yeah. planned here to talk to you about if we yeah run out of things I know to we can wrap it up yeah. and go have a pizza. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> I think for me, like certain things, when it comes to my music and when it comes to things like my blog and when it comes to even things like going to the gym um, and having discipline for certain things like that, I think it kind of started with the music side of things where like when I was singing at Central, um, rehearsal is huge, um, both at Central and where I go now, Mountain Park. Um, so there's like, we have like Thursday night rehearsals. Um, and everything is done like a certain way, you know, so that there's no, we, we try to do things with excellence, um, to do our best with the gifts that God has given us, um, which I think is a good thing. And, um, so I think everything just kind of started there with like rehearsal and just, um, everyone having a job to do and, and kind of getting together as a team. And when everyone does their job, what they're supposed to do, then the whole part comes together. Like the whole project comes together, um, whether that's music or, or whatever you're working on. So I've kind of learned to appreciate the discipline of rehearsal and the discipline of of practice. And um, so I have them to thank for that, actually. Like my time at Central, I learned so much and I am always going to be so appreciative of that and um, the leadership there and what it taught me. And same thing at Mountain Park, same thing, like great leadership. Um, and I'm still learning, always learning. And leadership's so important, and I, and I see it everywhere. And I'm because I'm a huge critic of mm-hmm. it, right? I, mm-hmm. So I'll acknowledge it where it, where it exists, but immediately I see where it doesn't as mm-hmm. well. And Central hasn't failed me much. And you, you know, it's it's less about faith in God mm-hmm. and church than it is about connectedness, teamwork. And, you know, when you're on the platform mm-hmm. and you're part of the worship team, yeah. and I, I never really got worship. It's the music. I thought, yeah. Oh, okay. I thought worship <laughs> was praying. Yeah. But, you know, Kim McLaren was, she would always refer to it as the worship team. I'm like, yeah. the worship team? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that the band? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Like music? Yeah. And um, <clears throat> it's it, it's not lacking there at all. You know, yeah. like 
And it's funny because I see leadership from Bill, mm-hmm. which is the top of the pyramid in that in that case. Mm-hmm. You know, he might not put it that way, but he is the you know lead he's pastor. the t- yeah, yeah he's the lead pastor. I mean, he is the leader. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's got to be accountable to the board of directors, and there's leaders there too. Uh, but I see it in the I see Bill's leadership in the parking lot, mm-hmm. and not only that, Carlene's leadership through Bill in the parking lot. Yep. Absolutely. Like, I can taste it in the coffee. Yeah, absolutely. They because love... Bill makes coffee a very certain way, and yep. it comes from <laughs> from Carlene's Scandinavian brew. Mm-hmm. It's thick. You can stand <laughs> the spoon in the coffee. <laughs> and so when you go to the cafe, it's the same. Okay, at men's group, it's that brew. Yeah. Okay, and now I just started drinking coffee over the last few years ago, and it was my church that tricked me. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's free and it smells great, and it's seven thirty on Thursday mornings. Yeah. I'm like, oh, some, <laughs> some mornings I come there, I don't want to be there. Mm-hmm. And I drag myself because it's a good support group, and it's not got anything to do with the God thing. It's mm-hmm. my men, and it's a good foundation. But yes. that leadership, like I said, you could taste it in the coffee. I remember, I wish I could remember his name. Just, a, a, I don't know how else to describe him. a tiny, very black man. Okay. Uh, and very thick accent okay. and sweet. And, and and my girlfriend at the time, many years ago, when I pulled up, he came over to the car. I'm like, like I'm rolling down the window like he's going to tell me to move or something. Like, what's this guy doing? And she says, he's getting my door. Aww. So I'm already out of the car by now. And I'm like, dude. Yeah. You get in my girl's door. Like, come here. That's awesome. I give him a big hug. And That's he's like, awesome. you know, and so yeah. I made sure to tell Bill on the men's group. I'm like, dude, you're like, you can see the leadership in the, and that's the way it should be. Yeah. So, it's, it's about community. It's about family. I think people have a misconception about what church is or should be. And it's, it's very little to do with programs and, and structure. And it has everything to do with community. We weren't meant to do life alone. Mm-hmm. And um, it's really important that we have people alongside of us, um, not just for encouragement, for, but for accountability as well, um, because life is hard enough as it is. And, you know, doing it alone is, is makes it even worse. You know, we weren't created um, to do things isolated. We were mm-hmm. created for a relationship and for community. And so number one, um, the church is about community and doing life together. Mm-hmm. Now, I saw it over at Mountain Park, too. I, after I got over walking by all the traders that used to be at Central, because I went like, you, and then I had to think, well, listen, dude, you're here now. Mm-hmm. You're you're not being loyal to your church if you see it that <laughs> way, too, but that you're there. I see Andrew and mm-hmm. then um, the other Andrew, Alex, and then Brenda. Like, I knew that most of them were over there, but... They've run a tight ship over there too, but I wasn't expect, I wasn't prepared for. Now, like it's ninety minutes. Yeah. Like, uh, it's what do you mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> nobody told me this is a half an hour longer than I'm used to. Yeah. So I, I'm starting to wind up after an hour. I'm getting restless in my <laughs> seat, and I'm like, man, they're really going long. To, oh no, it's an hour and a half. Yeah. Service. And we just moved to two services. Oh, did you? As well, yes. So you're doing like a 9.30 So it's, uh, what is it, 9 o'clock and 11, Nine I think 11. it is. Okay. I should know this. This is embarrassing that I don't know this. Um, but yeah, I think it's 9 and 11, I believe. Well, it's nice that they're coming back after the, you know, the shutdown because, you know, there, yeah, there's very sure. few churches that are actually Yeah, I think everyone's now. just doing what they're comfortable with and... Um, what their conscience allows them to do. And um, I think it's great to see community back out there again. And as far as the local church is concerned, like regardless of where you choose to attend, we're all one church. A church isn't a building, it's the people. And so, you know, different churches have different names and different affiliations and things like that. But at the end of the day, we're all one family and we're all one body and we're all one church under under God. So. Mm. I think when we think of it that way, we can get rid of a lot of the division. How you've been handling this COVID experience with the shutdown, the lockdown? I know you're out of work partially. Mm-hmm. And you picked up something. I don't know if you want to talk about that, but you know your old career, or you know, yeah. So, the so way of I'm putting food on your table. Is yeah, kind of so I'm thankful pause. I have something uh, right now. I think this time a lot of people are realizing what they have to be thankful for. 
Um, I know there's a lot of things that we can complain about and things, but for me, I've realized like at least I have some income, like I have something going on and I'm able to still have a roof over my head and food on the table and, and everything like that. So I'm, I'm learning to see the good, the positive, the silver linings, mm. um, rather than the negative. Um, and I think times like this, difficult times, you, it's a choice. You can see the positive or you can see the negative. And times like this are, can, um, can kind of be used to help us to grow and develop um, into, I think, who God intended us to be as far as character and um, how we see life, how we see other people, um, our relationship with him as well. So I think it's all about perspective and it's all about choices as well and how we choose to see things. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I, I like how you said learned to see. Yeah, it's a process for sure. Oh, yeah. I haven't so... arrived or anything. Like I still have off days where, you know, you wake up and certain things aren't the way that you want them to be, whether it's like professionally or relationship wise or, you know, financially or whatever. And you got to make a choice every day. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious about how that works. When you wake up and you haven't even gotten out of bed yet mm -hmm. and you're already miserable yeah well, how the heck can that happen <laughs> you, like, you, it's a brand new day yes. and you even said to me the other day well you know what tomorrow's a new day mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter mm -hmm. you're gonna wake up and it's gonna be a brand new day and yes. I was I was grateful for that because yeah. you need to be reminded I know that yeah. but you know when someone else <laughs> says it to you but I'm, I'm because you know I have I've been pretty lucky mm -hmm. with my mental stability let's call it yeah you know I, I don't suffer you know depression that much but i've got a little taste of it over the last few years in the yeah. winter mm -hmm. and um i'm like when you wake up and you're sour and evil well, mm -hmm. not evil you know what i <laughs> yes. mean but you're like god help me if anyone gets in my way today yeah. i'm going to jail <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah well i think everybody has days like that and again it's a it's a choice that we make um you know, being happy is not the same as having joy. Happiness can uh, go up and down and fluctuate with our happenings around us. It can be affected by our circumstance and our situations. But um, joy is a choice that we can still choose to have regardless of what's happening around us, regardless of how things are going, um, whether it's good or bad. We can still choose that and we can make a conscious decision on how we treat people, how we treat ourselves, the choices that we make, the habits that we um, participate in, things like that. What are you fired up about these days? What are you incredibly passionate? I know obviously your faith and what you yes. do on the stage is really, Absolutely. you're passionate about that. Your yes. writing, obviously making a difference for others is something yes. that cranks you up. But yep. outside of that, what do you, what else turns you on? Oh gosh. Um, yeah, just music and having that creative outlet. And uh, so like when we did start going back to church again and I was able to sing again and actually have a mic in my hand, that was mm -hmm. huge. I was so excited. <laughs> so I think it's like something that like I didn't take it for granted per se beforehand, but now I'm extra thankful for it. Um, so my attitude has changed in that way too. Um, and just using this time to prepare for when I am able to go back out and sing. So writing songs and using this time to really focus on that and getting better at the guitar um, as much as I can and um, writing blogs and encouraging others and just kind of focusing on coming out of this thing better than when I went in. Mm -hmm. All right. So you got some music you're going to play for us. Yes. I want to know what they're about. I like I care less. Like I told you yesterday. Yeah. After I get done an interview like Rob Berry mm -hmm. yesterday. I come down here, I get the music cranked up. I'm bouncing, I'm hardly seated. The music's <laughs> loud. I'm on this huge high, you know? So I'm more interested in, you know, what it took, where you were as a person, mm -hmm. what the inspiration of the music might have been. Sure. And then, you know, I told you, you know, one of my favorite clips is Jen Chapin's, where mm -hmm. we, I've got her on the phone from Pennsylvania. Well, she's in New York, not Pennsylvania. In one of the boroughs, I can't remember, Manhattan. She talked about the song, and then we played it. She talked about the song, and then we, and that was before her album ever came out. So yeah. I'm interested in that. But what do you got planned as far as what you, because 
I don't want people to think that you just brought that guitar as a safety blanket that you're actually going to play something. No, of course not. <laughs> That's not what this is at all. And I want, I want, I'll bring my other mic over so I pick up the guitar too, but to take as long as you need to talk about what, what's the first song you're going to play. So I'm going to do a song. Actually, this is my mom's favorite song that I've written. And when I told her I was coming here and doing this, that mm -hmm. was like one of the first things she, are you going to do Grace and Mercy? You can do Grace and Mercy? <laughs> It's like, Mom! okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I sang it for her uh, 60th birthday party uh, a couple oh, weeks ago as cool. well. She requested that. So How it old is... is the song? Oh, gosh. I think I think it's about a year and a half old. Okay. About that. Um, so the story behind it is I was kind of going through the thick of, you know, something really difficult. And a friend of mine was also going through something really difficult. And so I wrote it. Um, from the perspective of like for myself um just kind of reflecting on my life and how um god's grace and his mercy has been present in my life this whole time and then also as an encouragement not just to myself but to others that are going through difficult times as well and not to care really about what people think um Amen. as far as you know we all make mistakes we all go through difficult times um and just to pick yourself back up and just kind of lean into God's grace in your life and keep moving forward. And if people want to talk, let them talk. Wow. It, you know, at the end of the day, it matters what God says about you, not what other people say about you. All right. So I figured out how can we do how I can bring this mic over to you without anyone seeing us. So I'm just going to put your website up there and I'm going to mute the mic. Then I'm going to make the switch okay. and then uh, we'll go live. So okay. this is Jennifer Lynn, everyone. Hang on one second. When everyone else counted me out You stayed behind to make sure I was fine And nobody's perfect and you knew I wasn't They called me nothing But you still saw something And you walk with me Through every valley And you carry me Through every storm And you fight for me When all seems lost And what did I do To deserve your Grace and mercy, they follow me. Love so amazing unconditionally. When everything is closing in, you hide me underneath your wings, and I wouldn't have made it any other way except for grace and mercy grace and mercy when they pointed out all of my flaws you saw the diamond that I could become all the pressure I felt it put me through hell but I'm so thankful you're not like everyone else cause you walk with me through every valley and you carry me through every storm and you fight for me when all seems lost and what did I do to deserve your 
grace and mercy, they follow me. Love so amazing unconditionally. When everything is closing in, you hide me underneath your wings, and I wouldn't have made it any other way except for grace and mercy. Your grace and mercy. Go on and let them talk, let them say what they want to say. But when they see me walk by with my head held high, it's cause I know what you've done for me. Yeah, I know what you've done for me. It's your grace and mercy, they follow me. Love so amazing unconditionally. When everything is closing in, you hide me underneath your wings. And I wouldn't have made it any other way except for grace and mercy your grace and mercy i'm so thankful for grace and mercy yeah. ooh, ooh, ooh. wow <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. This is where you can find her on Facebook. <laughs> She's not on the Twitter. <laughs> okay. Well done. Thank you. Now... That one wasn't written for your mother, obviously. No, no. <laughs> what was she like about that one? I don't know. I think it probably <laughs> just a lot of, well, anytime I've played it live, it resonates with a lot of people. I've had people come up to me and, and say that how much they love that song. I think it's just a reminder to everybody, regardless of what you've been through, um, that, you know, everything that's gotten you to, from there to here, um, every good thing is from God and every good thing comes from him and even the difficult stuff um you make it through because of the grace of god you know we don't go um, completely stir crazy even though we feel like we might sometimes uh, myself included you know when things don't go our way but um the only reason i haven't gone stir crazy is because of the grace of god um, and that hope that things get better um, every day is a new day you find that that's an underlying commitment or an underlying inspiration for all your music or you find because most artists write about heartbreak and fall and i do that too and, yeah absolutely i have those songs as well um so people can find that on my instagram um as well i do videos on there of songs that i write instagram how long can you go on instagram you it's can like one make minute. no you can go longer now oh, does it have to be live though you can go live on instagram too but you can't upload more than a minute, can you? Yeah, you can now. Yeah, oh. you can like people do like Instagram lives and they upload it to their yeah. Grid. I get that, and you yeah. you got like an hour on Instagram Live, I think. Yep, and you can upload the entire thing onto your grid, like onto What's your. What's the thing. limit for length of video on Instagram now? Because it was only because you can't, seconds but before, yes, right? so it used to be a minute, but now they give you the option a short video or a long video. And what's the long video? Do you know? As long as I think, well, I haven't done like a full hour live thing. But you can like people That's are all posting I need is another platform to put my stuff on. Yeah, well, a lot of people are on Instagram. You could try and just see what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's awesome. So again, most artists, it seems like like I mean, it's all about heartbreak and love. Yep. It's falling in love. It's falling out of love. Yep. That's, that's it. That's, that's a part all of we it write too. about. <laughs> <laughs> I have those songs too. Yep. Yeah. So I think just as a songwriter, um, 
I think it's a balance, especially as someone like, yes, I am a Christian, but I'm still a human being living in this imperfect world. And so, yes, I talk about my faith and I write about my faith because it is a huge part of who I am. Mm -hmm. So that's going to come out. Um, but I'm also human and I'm a woman. And so I, I go through things just like everybody else. I get my heart broken and I go through like, you know, difficulties just like anybody else. Um, just because we're of a certain faith doesn't mean that we're exempt from going through what everyone else goes through. So I write about that as well. You're already one of my friends that I don't have to remind like, um, does God have to come? And like, you know, there's a couple <laughs> of my buddies I'm like, dude, can we do, can we go three sentences? Can we talk about anything without you making a reference to the Bible somehow? I'm like, I'm not that guy. They're like, so you gotta go gentle yeah. with me because I don't wanna be the guy. And most of my guys like, I'm not going to mention names, but mm -hmm. most of my guys get it, yeah. you know, and if I set them up, you know, by saying like, like, come on, like, it's like, I don't need to be preached at the whole time. There's, uh, you know, I know there's yeah. for guys like that. Anyway, there's other things other than, I know there's nothing other than God, but there's, there's other things to talk about type mm -hmm. of things. So. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I think just some, everybody's passionate about different things and to like different degrees and stuff. So that's their thing. And that's what they love talking about. And that's cool. And yeah, you know, it's to the, each their own. The only reason it's on my lips so often now is because, well, my production role. Right. And mm -hmm. then when I'm downstairs with the kids, yep. like, usually I'm once a month downstairs with the kids. Mm -hmm. I like, I come home. I'm, I'm like, I just got off the radio. Yeah. Like I'm so high. I'm yeah. so wound up yeah. and exhausted at the same time. Like I come up those stairs after, even after one session, yeah. like an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're vampires. They suck the energy. They just completely <laughs> suck you dry of energy. I come up, I'm like, ah. Mm -hmm. And then people see my shirt and I'm like, I recognize that face. Yep. You've been with the kids all morning. Yep. Yeah, yep. so I'm not sure what it is because I never brought up children. Mm -hmm. you know, I, don't, I don't have any kids myself, so. Yeah. Um, maybe I'm just not used to it. Maybe it doesn't always happen that way, but everyone's like, oh, oh yeah, dude. Yeah. They just, they suck you dry. Yep. And it's not, they're not doing anything. They're just yeah, being yeah. They're just there. being themselves. <laughs> they're yep. just being that's, there, that's what they though. do. <laughs> so that's, uh, it's been a little bit of a challenge for me because I miss that. Man, it's, what's it been since February or something? Since March or something. Yeah. Yeah. Like I was on the last service. Mm -hmm where we, we played to an empty house and it was only a few weeks in. And I said to Derek, I'm like the first week back, mm -hmm. I want in. Yeah. Like make sure I'm on the crew. If it's not too much to ask, if I don't like, cause I don't have the most seniority there, but now I'm getting there now. I mean, mm -hmm. I've had a few years on the switch, still learning, still come home and go, Oh, you suck. Because it's a, it's like an instrument. There's a real rhythm to switching cameras. So, like oh, you, for sure. It's a gift. You yeah. can press the buttons. Yeah. Anyone can do that. Yeah. But it's going to the right person at the right time right to capture shot. the feel and the mood. Absolutely. It's really difficult. And so I found that even three or four years in, I'm still getting the hang of it. Oh, for sure. And, and it's always learning. I think it's a good thing. Like even with music, with learning an instrument, writing, any any skill, I think, you know, you're always learning. You should never stop learning no one ever like arrives and say they know everything about a subject i got a few people that think they <laughs> anyways i want to respect your time but we're already 40 minutes in see how okay. fast it goes by oh, it is fast yeah it does. okay so um and i want you to be able to get as much music out and sure. then if you've got the time we'll work on making you a youtube star later Okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you got planned for the next one for the next one um well since we were talking about you know writing love songs and and stuff like that or heartbreak songs as well as christian songs might as well do one of the, one of each okay you can do that uh, <laughs> all right i'm just gonna pull you up again over here and the website is jenniferlynn.net and then i'll bring you the mic so and then i'm hoping the sound will be good um I'm getting better every time with the sound. That's so, awesome. See, Jennifer always Lynn. learning. <laughs> Thank you. 
know you're hurting Honey, I'm hurting too But I want you to know that I can see right through All the hurt and pain You feel inside Yeah, I see your scars, but I can raise your mind And I think I could belong to you You push and I pull and round and round we go My sun's rising, yours is always setting You're a fire out of control And I'm the ocean waves on your shore I'm an answered prayer you run away from getting A broken heart, faded love Did you really think you were the only one? Cause I've had my share of missing pieces I guess we're both a little rough around the edges But I think I could belong to you you push and I pull and round and round we go my sun's rising yours is always setting your fire out of control and on the ocean waves on your shore I'm an answered prayer you run away from getting You push and I pull and round and round we go My sun's rising, yours is always setting Your fire out of control and I'm the ocean waves on your shore I'm an answered prayer you run away from getting But I think I could belong to you Starstruck very often, but that's really good. I can only Thank you. <laughs> See, you're not focused on me, and I'm not really even looking at you. Mm-hmm. But my, the smile is straight off my face. I'm like, how can I have worked with you all these years? Never knew your name. I'm yeah. like cutting. I'm telling camera people to pick you up, mm-hmm. and I'm like, did you change your name? Because it doesn't. I never <laughs> knew your name. All pick those a, years, you never knew my name. A, I guess not. <laughs> Uh, what, what, so what how did I, you how was i doing it pick up the blonde that's what i'm wondering like how did you tell people to put my face on the camera <laughs> get the blonde camera too <laughs> <laughs> but anyway and then i've been chatting up jen chapin to you mm-hmm. for not not comparatively yeah 
just because, you know, when we met the other day for coffee, mm -hmm. like that was one of my favorite clips and you're an artist and I, I want to reproduce that clip mm -hmm. with you because mm -hmm. it sounded so pro. Yeah. She was on the phone again mm -hmm. from Manhattan. Mm-hmm. And then I stitched it together. She talked about the song and I just stitched it to put the song after. So it wasn't actually, we didn't do it like we're doing it now. Yeah. But I'm just sitting here going, <laughs> like all these bad words are going through my, this is how I, this is how I, 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 I self-express mm -hmm. is with swear words. Okay. <laughs> like the worst ones you can think of. And they're like, I'm thinking, oh. <laughs> So well done. I don't Thank know. You. I don't get. I don't get impressed all that easily. I don't think. But like that is beautiful. Thank you. It's a really nice song. So Thank where you, you want to? Did we talk about that in depth? Um. So that one I wrote back in March, um, I believe. So it didn't take very long um, to write that one. I remember it was a Sunday afternoon. I I'm calling that. it. Yeah. You're gonna be a star. Thank you. If, I mean, you're putting the effort in. You just got to be smart about the marketing and the yeah, yep. Like you don't, you've got too much talent. To, like you know what, Niagara's got so much. I know a lot of musical talent mm -hmm. in the town, and I've had many of them play the show. Yeah, some of her teeny bop music, you know, the kind of Taylor Swift wannabes, and the yeah, but, you know, I love them all the same. But yeah, you got some soul, girl. Thank you. I and appreciate that very much. It takes like a special type of person to be able to write. You're writing. Like the notes and the music and like, I can't you see that guitar over there. Yeah. I've had it 10 years. <laughs> I can barely do a D chord. I can do a D. Yeah. I can do That's all around the D, the D minor. I don't know whatever this is with the, the pinky. Yep. <laughs> it takes practice. I can't. And, and even I'm not where I want to be guitar wise. Like I've... You don't need to be though, because when you can write music like that, mm -hmm. like the same with Aaron Berger, he's like Jimmy. I, I'm not a guitar player. Mm -hmm. Josh Mills, same thing, but they know how to write music mm -hmm. and compose. Like in Berger's case and, and Josh's case too, they're bringing in violins and horns and like who writes this stuff? Yeah. Or do you just hand it over to the violinist and go here? Do something with it. Yeah. Put a solo, like you'll figure out where to put the solo in, but like you don't need to be able to, you don't need to be Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. Well, I try not to, to like, it's, it. it's so easy to compare yourself to. I think we all do it from right. time to time. We all have the comparison bug. Right. And um, so I have to try really hard not to compare myself to really, really awesome guitar players because that's their gift. Mm -hmm. And I'm a songwriter first. Um, and the reason I, uh, picked up the guitar so I could write. And so um, I definitely want to get better as time How goes on. How long playing guitar then? Oh, gosh. Um, I first started teaching myself probably like 10 years ago, but it wasn't serious. Right. It wasn't serious until like the maybe the last five years or whatever. Um and I never so took... Do you, do you understand how that gives people hope that are watching and don't play? Like, because... Aaron Berger was he, he's still a huge you can even see on the ca on the camera that you are me this is kind of like their thing mm -hmm. we are all one together um the you are me army mm -hmm. and um where, where was I going with that oh no the um like he he would tell me 15 minutes a day mm -hmm. you're playing guitar in 30 days mm -hmm. that's 15 I'm like 15 minutes a day even i can find the discipline for now as it yeah. turns out i didn't find the discipline <laughs> to play 15 minutes a day for 30 days yeah. but like instant hope because that i can get around now i'm six four and these mm -hmm. hands don't work all that they mm -hmm. don't have the dexterity i know no one does and you know i was at the mansion house with, again with another band i can't remember who it was maybe it was chris but he's like jimmy there's a hump mm-hmm like, because I can play three or four chords, but I can't get to them. Yeah. My, like, I can see my fingers and they just won't move mm -hmm. the way I want them to. There's like lead and slow. Yeah. And I remember teaching myself. As soon as you get over that hump, then it gets fun. Then you're, yeah. Then you're picking up the guitar all the time because right now it's like, yes. Pain. It's getting through the, um, you know, when you don't have any calluses yet on your fingers. 
and getting right. to the point where you do have calluses. So now I have calluses on my fingers. And so now it doesn't hurt unless I'm playing and practicing for like two hours and then I got to put it down. Um, but I remember teaching myself. Um, my dad got me this guitar that I'm holding. Um, it was for, I think, a Christmas present one year, actually, when I was still married. And um, I think for so many years, he saw in me what I had, didn't see in mm. me yet. Um, so he's always encouraging me and he always, I don't know, for as long as I can remember, he's always just kind of joked with me and, and said stuff like, when are you going to get famous? When are you get <laughs> stuff, you know, but he says it as a joke, but he's like half kidding, half not. Mm -hmm. Um, but he's always encouraged me. Both of my parents have always encouraged me, um, and believed in me even when I didn't believe in myself. And I'm very fortunate to have had people friends and mentors along the way that have done the same thing so i wouldn't be able to do this without them i don't want you to play another song because i feel like you're it's like how can it get better than the last one <laughs> okay the first one was okay ma okay i get it you know um, i say that lovingly i don't know your mother um but man that was that's uh, what was that one called that was called uh, belong to you hmm. yeah so that's on my Instagram too. Like I'll do videos and I'll post it on my Instagram you until get I get in the studio. I yes, I was I've been in the studio once only, and Mr. Derek Elliotson. Oh um, yeah. Yes. So that was. Don't lose that connection. He's he's amazing. He's super talented. Oh yeah, and he um, plays drums and guitar. He plays everything. DJs like he's sound he, man. He's yeah. like a he's brilliant. Absolutely. So just quite a few years ago, when I was still at Central, um, I wrote a song called back to the basics and he heard it and um you know he said hey come into the studio and he had heard a riff like in his head like he, he could hear it yeah song? and so i went to the studio it was my first time in the studio so i was super nervous but he's amazing and it, it was, a, it was a, yes it was a great experience and um, he's all set up at his at his home he's got like everything pro like everything yeah. top notch oh yeah and um great experience and it turned out amazing. And I remember the first time I heard it, it was actually in front of other friends of mine for the first time. So you've got a professional cut of that? I do. It's on my SoundCloud. So you can okay. go on SoundCloud. And if you scroll down, go to Back to the Basics, um, and you'll see it. It's my only song that I've ever done in the studio so far. Um, and sometime in the new year, I'm planning on going into the studio and doing some demo work and, and things like that. Is that where so, you're going back to Eric, uh, Derek? Um, yeah. So I have a couple people uh, in mind that I'm going to work with. Um, and so that's the only one that I've gone to the studio before, but I remember hearing it for the first time, first time in a studio and him taking my mediocre, you know, guitar playing skills and what he heard. But this is just a testament to the genius that he is and any good producer, really, that they can take someone's, you know, mediocre, you know, guitar playing and they can hear the full song in their head already. Mm -hmm. And what he did with that song when I heard it for the first time, it was my song, but even I was blown away. I was like, that's my song. I was like, what did, it was like, like it sounded, it was a, my first professional song that was done. And I was just so proud of that. And I was so appreciative to him. And it gave me more confidence as a songwriter because just because it sounds like this on an acoustic right now, you know, when you're playing live or when you have the opportunity to get into the studio and make it larger than life, it gave me a lot more confidence of what my songs could be and any great producer that's what they do so i'm always going to be so appreciative to him for giving me that opportunity i found you on soundcloud I'm there following. i am so i haven't uploaded like the new stuff a lot of my new stuff is on instagram um so i have to update my soundcloud but uh yeah and then the funny thing is too after i recorded that in the studio a couple years later i actually wrote a new part for it so I have to go back into the studio <laughs> and update the song. But um, you'll get the idea. you got to quite that. the library here. Yes. So it's just me and my guitar, except for that one song that Derek Elliotson produced. Bluebird, Feet on the Ground, Grace and Mercy, mm -hmm. Leave the Light On, Run Around Town, Tennessee, Way It Is, Still Gonna Shine. And which, which is the one you did Back to Derek? the Basics. Back to the Basics. Okay. Only vocal... Uh, play that one on the way out what are you playing next and what's it all about uh well i can play back to the basics if you like you can do that live okay what's that um well we can play back let's play back to the basics the studio cut on the way out oh 
Oh, okay. Sure. Right? Yeah, we can do that. And we'll just end with that. And sure. And it'll give us time to have the cameras off yeah, and kind of get that. set. Okay. And then, so what else you got in your bag of tricks there? <laughs> okay, so this is a song called Bluebird. And um, it's just, I wrote this, I think it was, I would say 2018, I want to say, somewhere around there. Okay. Um, so it's at least a year old. And um, so this song just talks about all the things that you go through in life, the good and the bad, and how they make you who you are. And everything that I've experienced in my life, the good and the bad has made me who I am. And eventually uh, pushed me and encouraged me and um, to sing. And to now I'm able to sing in front of people and write for people. And um, so you can... A lot of people, we like to think, you know, all the good things that happen to us and we acknowledge all that. But a lot of times we forget sometimes to even thank the people that hurt us and the people that broke our hearts and the people that are the, the hard circumstances. Um, we don't really like to thank that. But a lot no, of times... I'm enough no. of that already. No, exactly. That's and was, we don't think to, to be thankful for those moments. But no. when you're on the other <laughs> side of it, and I can see now in my life, a lot of things that have worked out the way they have, um, have worked out for the good. Um, and I know like there's a verse in the Bible that says that, you know, God works all things together for good. Um, and it's for our good and for his glory. So we can always say thank you no matter what's happened, if we have that perspective. Um, so I can see how different things have shaped that. And so it's about the good and the bad shaping who you are. Cool. Yeah. All right. So this is the website, jenniferlynn.net. And stand by. We'll come back with uh, the last lie of song. Yes. I've had something to say since I was young I almost didn't have a chance to Life did all it could to bite my tongue But this heart's still beating thanks to you Life, it didn't mean a thing Till you made this bluebird sing I remember the first time that I met you You saw a spark I thought had died You fanned the flame higher and higher And held me up till I could fly you breathe life into these wings And you made this bluebird sing Now I can fly away Stronger than before Because of you I'm sure That I can find my way Through that open door Now I am secure now watch this bluebird soar mm -mm. There was a time when it seemed hopeless No relief or end in sight I had to pick up all the pieces but you helped me find my fight 
Yeah, you tried to clip these wings, but you made this bluebird sing. Now I can fly away stronger than before. Because of you, I'm sure that I can find my way through that open door. Now I am secure. Now watch this bluebird so Yeah, you made me who I am, the good and the bad. And nothing will be wasted. Yeah, you can bet on that. Cause I can fly away stronger than before. Because of you, I'm sure that I can find my way through that open door. Now I am secure. Now watch this bluebird soar. the basics i'm gonna have to find that wow thank you so much that was <laughs> thanks it's i don't know why i'm so surprised i mean <laughs> i've seen you sing mm -hmm. and then i've seen you play only since we became friends on facebook just yeah. recently and mm -hmm. the universe works in strange ways there you are i'm like that's her because <laughs> <laughs> um Anyway, I don't know why I'm surprised, but it's, um, I think the lyrics and the songwriting. Thank you. It's not, you know, the genius licks or anything like that, but you don't, you don't need them. And then it's weird that just last week I was telling you about, um, Jen Chapin. Mm -hmm. She seems to got the same name. You won't believe the similarity. <laughs> yeah. Like that's Harry Chapin's daughter, Cats in the Cradle. Nice. Like that's. He, you know he's a yeah. legend yeah that's awesome and um she's like a real she's a school teacher too but um activist okay left wing total like feed the hungry mm -hmm. like really good soul that's awesome and no bullshit about her type yeah of, the, no like there's just she's hard yeah and Stephen Stephen Crump, her husband, plays the stand up bass. Okay. And he's just ridiculous. Oh. Like just a a witch. Nice. Like he makes that thing talk. <laughs> you know how big those things yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. And um, so yeah, it's strange. I'll I'll put you in touch with her. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. That'd be awesome be to connect. To yeah, for see, sure. See what comes out of that. Cool. See, this is the this is what I love to do. First of all, there's for me. There's nothing better, like, I, I was up north a couple of weeks ago with mm -hmm. a couple of high school friends I haven't seen in forever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the only discs I had on me were Theater Crisp and, you know, local musicians, Aaron Berger and the Blue Stars. I forget who else. Anyways, I gave them the disc because they wouldn't they wouldn't let me stop playing the music. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, Jimmy, put it on again, which was fine with me because I know the, I know all the words. Mm -hmm. These guys are hearing it for the first time. Yeah. But Jimmy Reed is like, 
dude, what the, what is this? I go, Theater Chris. Mm-hmm. And then I get a vocal sample on one of the tracks. So like, you know, that's fun. Mm-hmm. Like, can you hear me? <laughs> 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 but that's like, what fills me up is introducing someone to music mm-hmm. that they've never heard of and they can follow for the rest of their lives and they can say, yeah, yep. well, geez, you know, local band. And, and even the fact that they're my friends mm-hmm. is cool too, right? Yeah. And um, it's kind of like, you know, if you set a guy and a girl up mm-hmm. and it becomes something really cool, it's mm-hmm. just like you can say, hey, that I had was a you. part in that. Yeah, 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 you yeah. Know? yeah. And then... You know, either through church or sometimes through my work in real estate when I used to be a realtor. Um, And this show, my hope is that somebody sees it and goes, oh, yeah, that interview with Jennifer Lynn. And you know what I got out of it? And from now, like, it changed my life forever. Mm -hmm. Or you said this and, wow, thank you. I had no idea. Yeah. So it's like, it's all, like, my mother used to say, you know, when I was bummed, depressed or whatever, she'd, she'd kind of kick me in the ass and say, now go do, go do something nice for someone else. It's not about you. That's what mm-hmm. your problem is, is that you're all focused on your stop feeling sorry for yourself. Go do something for someone else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she was right. It helps. Yeah. You know, the figurative, you know, you put the, the jacket down in, on the, in front of the puddle for yeah. a lady or something like that. Mm-hmm. Like, I know that's figurative, but we get so this is such an egocentric time yes a self-centered true. time and especially now after covid yeah and you know i was one of the guys that said after 9 11 oh this changes everything we're going to go back to our gardens mm-hmm. our dinner parties our churches our families our dinner tables yep and maybe it did for a little while i think covid forced us to go there a little bit yeah i'm not sure how that all works out and I want to see the blessing in COVID, but I'm so damn angry. I can't mm-hmm. get the anger out yet with the masks and the the death rate. And we are making a big deal out of this thing. <laughs> like it's, yeah, okay. I get it. But just like an overreaction. So like for me, it's, it's the best thing I can do is, is hook two people up that didn't know each other or, you know, introduce someone to music or introduce them to a conversation that might set them up to change their... Yeah. life and that's that's the hope that's why i do music that's why i write and and sing what i do um hopefully everything that i've been through at the end of the day um if someone else is encouraged by it or feels hope because of it or it just makes their day or it's what they needed to hear whether it's a song whether it's a blog then i know that everything that i've experienced wasn't in vain and i think that's the main focus for my life and uh, going forward um, that was my prayer um, that I asked God um, so many times you know in tears even um, saying like everything that's going on right now you know over the years the last few years that I've been through um, you know really makes me angry and sad and depressed and lonely and all that kind of stuff but I said what would make me even more angry um, would be if it was all in vain, if it was for nothing. And so I, that's, you know, my prayer was make this count for something, make this count like big time. And, uh, hopefully someone else will be able to learn from it or get hope from it or get encouragement from it. Um, put a smile on their face, make their day. Um, you know, if they hear a song and it changes somebody's life or if they read a blog and it, it was something they needed to hear. That's the focus well, you made a difference for me today. I'm oh, grateful to have you, you as a friend now yes. and in, in the studio and playing and pouring out your heart. And wow, you're really good. Thank you for that. Thank and you for fact, having me. You're welcome. It's, it's <laughs> my pleasure. It's, you know, and I confessed this to you, I think, last week when we had um, coffee, for lack of a I know neither one of us were drinking coffee. I did get one of those. Um, I noticed those frilly it was early pink. drinks. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> I had a hot chocolate, <laughs> strawberry cream or whatever. Yeah, six fifty they are now. I haven't bought it's one for in a, a few venti. years. It well, my used to be like five cause, bucks because I don't drink coffee, 
So I'm back on it again. Yeah. So I I love the smell of coffee. I just don't like the taste of it. I never have. Oh, you just got to put lots of cream and sugar in it. It's a new drug. You get hooked on. <laughs> um, so what I do, like me. <laughs> for me, like it's either hot chocolate, peppermint hot chocolate specifically, or on Sundays right after church, I go to Starbucks and I get a venti vanilla java chip frappuccino um and i don't want to know the ingredients in it because i want to <laughs> i want to continue to enjoy it for as long as i can it's probably yeah. completely not healthy for me oh, at all it's highly addictive uh, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty much like a glorified milkshake is what mm -hmm. it is it's a frozen milkshake but uh yeah that's my thing <laughs> back to basics is what you want to hear on the way out back to the basics sure yeah back and, to the basics yes okay, and produced by derek go in depth about what this is and then you can give okay. all the props to so it was else. um written actually quite a few years ago i would say probably four or five years ago and um it's produced by derek elliotson in his studio um really great job uh, just amazing um talent he is and just an overall great human being and um i wrote it pretty much um talking about just getting back to your roots just getting back to who you are back to your faith back to the roots of who you are as a person um your dreams your goals whatever that is for you just getting back to the basics of who you are and who you want to be back to the foundation who else is on it me just to, you well derek's playing all the instruments <laughs> he played all the rest of the instruments yes so as far as i know instruments no i did not he put all the well, music around. Well, the thing is, you know, for someone like me, that my guitar playing is very limited, and I get in the room with someone like him, I'm just going to let him just do that because that's his gift, and he's very good at it, and I would much rather him do that. Yeah, so maybe. I just kind of let him run with that, and and he did a fantastic job. Anything you want to say to wrap up? Thank you for having me, and for everyone who's watching, thank you for listening, and... Um, Contact yeah. information. How do we get a hold of you? I, we've talked about all. Yeah. All the so questions. Instagram is um, Ms. Feed. Jennifer Lynn underscore. So M S Jennifer Lynn L Y N N underscore is my Instagram. So you can hear and see um, new music and blogs and daily happenings in my life. Um, I have a music Facebook page. I'm still working on it, but I am on Facebook. So you can find me Jennifer Lynn. And then my website is jenniferlynn.net. And then I'm on SoundCloud as well. And we're going to get my YouTube channel up and running as well. So I'll Amen. just keep watching my Instagram and Facebook for that too. Look at this beauty. <laughs> wow. You don't take bad pictures either. Thank you. Jennifer Lynn, that's it for us. Uh, share it around if you like it and we'll talk to you. Well, who do I got? Hang on a second. What do I got? Viz is coming up tomorrow. Erin Visatine. She's her own radio host. Well, not lately. The Viz shows up tomorrow. That's Thursday at noon. I've been going three o'clock all day, all, all week. Noon because Ivy's in school. So we need to get that done before she gets out. And then... <laughs> I think I'm going to interview Ivy. She's five and she is a pro at Mario Kart or whatever. <laughs> and she's a ham. And I've been, I had Bella Morales on. She's when she was 11. She did the reading at church, the Christmas story. Absolutely broke my heart at Christmas. Now that's the youngest kid I've had on. And she was, she was amazing. Mm -hmm. And her brother was on two weeks ago. He's 20 now, but if I can get Ivy to come on, that'd be cool. She's five. And then Friday at three o'clock, I got Paul, Paul Layton. He's going to bring the keyboard. He's going to play some music and then we're going to get really political. So on the way out, here it is. Jennifer Lynn, back to the basics. Enjoy everyone. Feeling come on 
only blind Nothing's ever gonna be the same again I went down the road most traveled Away from everything I knew That's when it started to unravel And left me with a cold naked truth Shatter. I let my worries take me 